careful, don't smudge it. It's this filthy ink. I'm covered in it. Here, sister dear, let me try. Here, yeah, let's have a look. Patience, my dear Spiker. There. I'll have to examine it under the glass, but it looks perfect. It is the perfect forgery. Yeah, where's the plate for the back? Ah, oh, that's the snag. We don't have it. And what's the but use? it does exist. Uh, tell him, dearest sister. Our late lamented father, in his infinite wisdom, procured the plates. His accomplice was a man named Mullins, a low fellow. No offense, Spiker. Go on. They decided to hold a plate each till the heat cooled off. Clerical expression. I know what it means. Get on with it. Unfortunately, Mullins was arrested. Fortunately, he managed to hide the plate just beforehand. Uh, where's this uh, Mullins now? In star. In jug. In short, in prison. And you brought me all the way down here. My dear Spiker, Mullins is due to be released tomorrow. Counterfeit dollar plates, eh? Yes, Father Unwin. You realize the international implications if they are not recovered? Of course. Your assignment is to follow Mullins until he leads you to the plates. I think I know where he'll be going. But on no account must he discover you have him under observation. It will require a very unorthodox approach. I realize that, Bishop. I think I have the glimmer of an idea. It'll never work, Father. We'll be stopped. Arrested, maybe. Look, Matthew, our assignment is to keep the ex-prisoner Mullins under discreet observation until he leads us to the counterfeit plates. And I think our present statue will enable us to do just that without being observed ourselves. Well, we'll find out when we reach Lord Hazelwell's residence. <laughs> Our proposition is a very simple one. I have the plate for the front of the one dollar notes. We have? That's right, we have. All right, we have the front plate. And my father told me that you, my dear Mullins, have the plate for the back. I know where it is. Which amounts to the same thing. Which means we're in business, as they say. All right. What's your proposition? Well, we, we don't want to get involved in the tedious business of printing. We sell the two plates to the highest bidder and split the proceeds the following way. 20% to you, Marlins. 
20% to spy car, 10 to dearest Martha, leaving 50% for myself. Very fair, I thought. 50% for you? You must be joking. I'm appalled. Why should you get off? I've got one of the plates. I want 50%. You three can split the rest any way you want to. I demand a half share. I see. Greed rars its ugly head. Greed? You offer me 20% and talk about greed? I see it all now. Greed. I see it all. I demand my quiet, rights. Quiet, quiet. Yeah, listen. It sounds like a car. Can you see anything? That's funny. I could have sworn I heard a car. Well, it's been a tiring day. I suggest we sleep on things. Tomorrow I'm sure we can come to some agreement. All right, Matthew. We'll wait until it's dark and then go inside the house. They'd never go up to bed, but the bishop's information was correct. Mullins is here, all right. Yes, but I think they're still awake. We'd better go upstairs and see what we can find out. You're so devious. Don't you trust me, eh? I refuse to trust Mullins or Spiker. There, I agree. But once we have those plates, we don't need to trust them. <laughs> I take your point. Uh, dear Alice Martha, Let's move on to Mullins' room. Right, Matthew. Twenty for you and eighty for me. <laughs> <laughs> Aristocrats. Yeah, you can't trust them. I don't trust anybody. But you and me, Mullins. We're the same sort. We could do a deal. Maybe. Fifty-fifty? I'll think about it. Someone's coming, Matthew. I think it might be wise to hide. You'd better get back to your own room. Right. <laughs> Spiker, talking to Mullins, making a deal. No, I don't trust him. Neither do I. What would you say to, uh, 60-40? What? Keep your voice down, man. All right. 50-50. But first, we must find out where he's hidden that plate. When we show him our plate in a dungeon tomorrow, I'll make him talk. <laughs> Good night, my dear Spiker. Well, Father, it seems Mullins is going to be made to talk. Yes, we'll take it in turns to sleep. But we must be in the dungeon tomorrow to hear what he has to say. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. All right, all right, I'll tell you. Well, we're waiting. The plate's hidden in an old barn on a deserted farm just outside Eastford. Greenacre Farm. Thank you, my dear Mullins. All right, Spiker, to the farm. Right. Going somewhere? Martha. I thought we had an arrangement, Edward. Uh, of course. Let me explain. Yes, I know. Even as a child, you're despicable. I'll take our plate, if you don't mind. But hand it over. I said, hand it over. Thank you. What do you intend to do? Go to the farm and collect the other plate. Goodbye, gentlemen. Hey, you come back. It's now good, Spike. I'm afraid she's gone. We've got to get out of here. Impossible. That door's a foot thick. I know how we could do it. Unchain me and I'll tell you. All right, Spiker. 
Under his bonds. What have he got to lose? I think it's time for us to leave too, Father. You're right, Matthew. Somehow we must get to Greenacre Farm before Lady Martha. <laughs> After her, Matthew. Keep up the speed, Father. We've got to get to that farm first. The cannon doesn't work, Mullins. It will. Right. Stand by. It wasn't loaded properly. He's right. We have to use more powder. More powder? Yeah, you'll blow us all to pieces. There's a fortune slipping through our fingers. Reload. I'm afraid Lady Martha seems to have a commanding lead. Don't be pessimistic, Matthew. We may yet gain the advantage. Don't be such a card, Spiker. Fuck! It's all right for you two. Here goes, then. Spiker, dear chap. I think I've broken my arm. Oh, stop quibbling, man. Let's get moving. We haven't got a car. Don't worry. I know a way we can still get there first. It is the open road for me when I wander fancy free. There's only two seats. Don't worry, dear chap. You and Marlins can squeeze in the back. Uh, give the propeller a turn. But I've hurt my arm. Must you always argue? Use the other one. Climb aboard. Uh, <laughs> this is where we leave our argumentative friend. 50-50? Why not? Ready? Contact. Sat in the back. But you are. I'm what? The pilot. I've never flown in my life. Neither have I. Well, Father, we seem to have lost the opposition. Quite so, Matt. But we mustn't underestimate them. They're a devious bunch, especially Lady Martha. She's a smash of poop. Here, what can she do? A ton plus 20 with two up. How long have you had it in? Two days. Perfect. Hey! What's 
for fixing the arm and the lift. Are you in some sort of trouble? No, <laughs> no, I'm uh, a male nurse. I'm uh, trying to recapture a patient. Uh, soft in the head, you know. Dressed like that, sir? Oh, uh, <laughs> he had a gun, a cannon. A cannon? Uh, raving, you know, <laughs> absolutely raving. Uh, if you just drop me off at uh, Eastford. Yes, I see, sir, yes. You can cut across the field to Greenacre Farm. Right. Thanks for the lift. stick or something. Oh, oh. that 
plate be hidden. Mullions! Uh, I think I've broken my leg. Never mind about that. Now you're here, you can tell me where that plate is. And then I'll help you down. I found it. Thank you. I'll take that. It seems we've all arrived. <laughs> yes, but I've got a gun. Put the plate down, Lady Martha. Now the other one. I know you've got it. My dear Spiker, can't we discuss this? No, we can't. Put it down with the other one. Let's be reasonable about this, old chap. Now, I'm going to walk out of here nice and slowly. And I don't want no one following me. Got it? The plates! <laughs> They've gone! Brethren, you all know the story of the tortoise and the hare, and in the hustle and bustle of this modern age, an old proverb comes to mind. Slow and steady wins the race, not the one that sets the pace. Do 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 do